the newly named Washington Commanders in 2022. Yeah, it, there was a lot of controversy um, down in the nation's capital. But aside from all that, on the field, they started their season experimenting with the new quarterback in town, Carson Wentz, uh, who was traded during that offseason. And yeah, it, it was not exactly um, a good experiment to go with. But an injury reopened the door for the mainstay in, in that organization, Taylor Heineke, to take over. And kind of like what he did the season prior, he won them a good chunk of games that put themselves in good playoff position. But unfortunately, once December rolled around, some bad luck came about. And Ron Rivera, the head coach, kind of got desperate after he saw Taylor Heineke got uh, a bad performance. And he reverted back to Carson Wentz as a starter when they had a third or fourth, I think it was a fourth round rookie in Sam Howell, the rookie quarterback in there. And in a must-win game, he turned to Carson Wentz. And that went just as well as you expected. And then the Commanders got themselves eliminated from playoff contention. But, you know, they did end their season on a high note. They surprisingly uh, blew out the Dallas Cowboys in their season finale when the Cowboys had a slight chance, a very slim chance, to win the division, the NFC East, in the finale. But... They blew their load. They blew it. And the commanders spoiled their party with rookie quarterback Sam Howell when he should have played the, the, the game prior. But nonetheless, they ended their season 8-8-1. Eight, eight and one. Yes, they tied with the New York Giants in that critical game. But nonetheless, you're now entering a season where there's no more Carson Wentz. There's no more Taylor Heineke. You're now with your second second year quarterback, Sam Howell. And that's obviously your goal for 2023. You got to figure out what exactly you have in Sam Howell. Because keep in mind, in that game against Dallas, um, he did okay, but he didn't throw the ball too much. It was a lot of relegated to the run game. Is, and then it was a lot of Dallas shooting itself in the foot, pretty much. So that game was pretty much over and done with. Uh, so Sam Howell didn't have to do a lot of the work. So your goal for 2023 is is to determine whether or not Sam Howell can be a starting quarterback for your team. So my team needs for the for the Washington Commanders, when I talked about them back in February, or what's it February? No, March, sorry. Um, they had to address the quarterback position if they were not going to commit to Sam Howell. Uh, that was easier said than done because, well, they finished 8-1. and one. They were middle of the pack. And there was no guarantee that they could trade up to get a quarterback. There's also no guarantee that there's going to be like a big name quarterback on the market. They also had to invest in some big uh, quarterback spots because, well, their secondary was not exactly that great. <clears throat> so both of their quarter corner spots needed uh, to be addressed in the offseason. And then they had to find uh, two guards in the offensive line because the interior offensive line. Yeah, it didn't hold up. I mean, it didn't hold up bad. It, it was just like so subpar so that uh, Carson Wentz faced a lot of heavy pressure in the interior, and so did Taylor Heineke at times. So looking at some of their offseason moves, um, obviously, like I said, they released Carson Wentz, um, and then they lost Taylor Heineke to the Atlanta Falcons, so he goes down south. And then they also released J.D. McKissick, but then th then again, they didn't really need, need him anymore because you, know, you have Antonio Gibson, you have... Uh, Brian Robinson, who broke out uh, last year. They also released corner Bobby McCain, which was a little bit of a surprise because, well, yeah, that's why that's the reason why they need uh, both corner spots to be invested in now. And then they let linebacker Cole Holcomb to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, he's a little bit on the older side, so that was fine. As long as they addressed his spot, they, they re-signed nose tackle Deron Payne, a key part in that pass rush and center Tyler Larson. So a solid piece in the offensive line. Um, some of the pieces that they did add in both free agency and the draft, they addressed the, the backup quarterback back spot in Jacoby Brissett from the skid marks, the Cleveland Browns. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Jacoby Brissett in 2022 actually hold up, held up decently um, while, until Deshaun Watson came back. So can't really complain there. So he's a decent reliable quarterback, I guess. And then 
they got offensive lineman Andrew Wiley from the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, he was okay with them. Um, linebacker Cody Barton from the Seattle Seahawks. Um, guard Nick Gates from the New York Giants. So, two pieces in the offensive line already there. So, let's see how they do. And then perhaps a big piece, not on like on the playing side, but more on the play calling side. They got offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy from the Kansas City Chiefs. I know a lot of people were raving for him to get a head coaching job, but perhaps maybe this is the step so that he needs. Maybe trying to mentor, maybe trying to coach up uh, Sam Howell. Maybe this is a start right here. And then the draft, they did their work. Um, Game corner, Emmanuel Forbes from Mississippi State. And safety and corner hybrid, like uh, like a swingman player. Uh, Quan Martin from Illinois. So it was mainly uh, the, the defense that they addressed in the draft. So for the Washington Commanders, they certainly commanded some decent offseason moves um, to balance out the team. And, you know, I initially questioned the release of Bobby McCain when, you know, one of their offseason goals for them was to go and get two cornerbacks. Um, but, you know, they went on to address such in the draft. And, you know, they both look OK, just as long as they adapt to the scheme that um, that's necessary in in their defense. On the offensive side, they got a little bit better with Andrew Wiley on the offensive line. And they also got another a guard in Nick Gates from the Giants. And they also drafted a swing offensive lineman by the name of Braden Daniels from Utah. So let's see how it pans out for them. So I think the offensive line looks a, a tad bit better. Let's just hope it holds up for Washington, especially with Sam Howell under center. But, you know, despite all that, though, um, I still think Ron Rivera's seat is still pretty hot. That's because, you know, for the past couple of years since he got there, sure, they won the division in 2020, but that division was awful <laughs> in the pandemic. I mean, it, it took a losing record um, to win that division. And sure, they put up a fight against Tampa, but it was just like, yeah, that's not going to slide the, ne the next year. And it certainly didn't. It certainly did not command anything. So he's had middle and quarterback play. And he's also made questionable decisions at that spot um, last year, too. So, oof, oofa. Along with a couple other in-game bad decisions that kind of make you wonder if Ron Rivera should be their head coach. I mean, sure, he's really try he really tries his best, you know, showing leadership and I give him that but it's just like on the field it's like you really got to wonder if this is going to hold up so this is kind of a make or break year for Ron Rivera um because if he can't make anything good with Howell with this coaching staff there's going to be questions to be had especially considering what I'm going to talk about next in just a bit so looking at some of their key potential games um in 2023 you have your first game um, at home in, in uh, against Arizona, you host them. You get to see your first look at if Sam Howell is starting, then fans are going to see how he's going to do if he does good. Okay, there's a sign. If he does bad, then ooh, you might have to consider putting in Jacoby Brissett. Then the big test comes when Josh Allen comes to town um, and the Bills too. So a big challenge already right there. And then another big challenge comes when you have to go to Philadelphia to face the NFC champion Eagles. Yeah. Whether or not um, uh, they, they do well or they struggle, the Eagles are always going to be a challenge um, against anybody when, when you're the opponent. So that all being said, uh, some of my big questions for the Washington Commanders is obviously going to relate to Sam Howell. You know, everyone's been talking about, oh, how Sam Howell has been doing well. Um in, in having a full offseason, you know, doing well in OTAs, doing well in mini camps. But, you know, how is that going to translate into game action? Especially considering when you have an offense with with Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, you know, two pretty good, pretty good receivers that did well with Taylor Heineke uh, last year. And yet, and you have this one two punch uh, Brian Robinson Jr. and Antonio Gibson at running back. But still, you have questions about. How well Sam Powell can perform. And he only had like what one game of starting experience. And he didn't really do all that much um, in that win against the Cowboys. So you have questions abound. And then here's the thing I wanted to go back point to or, earlier. The, the commanders are uh, uh, barring any sudden like changes. Are there going to be any other changes 
occurring with the impending ownership change. So in case you missed it, Dan Snyder finally sold the team to an investment group led by Josh Harris. So it's going to be finalized. I don't know when, but there's going to, there could be some big changes coming around. And depending on what else happens, there could like, there could possibly be even more changes. I don't know. So it's going to be curious if this new ownership uh, group looks at this season as an evaluation one, um, depending on how well, uh, how well or bad Sam Howell plays um, or maybe even other players too, because if so, and yeah, like I said, Ron Rivera's seat is definitely very, very hot. So the, like I said, the commanders made some decent moves um, in the off season to help out their defense and their offensive line, but everything uh, is going to revolve around Sam Howell. How is he going to do with only one game of starting experience? He is like a day three pick. It's going to be really interesting. Now there's some talent here, but I don't think it's going to be enough to command Washington to like any, like anything. No, I wouldn't say significantly positive, but I, I would say, I don't know if I would say remotely positive either, but I, I, I'll say I'll give it in the middle. I'll give it. I'll keep them in the middle because this division is going to be very competitive. I I expect Washington to be competitive as well, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. They are not going to command an, an enough in twenty twenty three. It's simple as that. So I expect them to go seven and ten at work at best eight and nine because who knows what Sam Howell is going to be like? Is he going to be howling like a wolf? Oh! Like he did against the Cowboys, or is he just gonna lie down and pray? <laughs>